Today in Around the Valley, we are looking to the sky as Pat McMahon talks with Dr. Sky about the comet you can see with your naked eye. There's a few magic names, eh, not often in science, but I've got one for you. Dr. Sky is back, and I'm glad because we're going to be talking about a comet. Dr. Sky, welcome back. Thank you, Pat. Good it's to be with you. It's always good to talk with you, particularly when <laughs> there would be no way that I have any idea why they even named this comet exactly. what they did. Uh, Neowise? Neowise. It sounds like a rap singer. Absolutely, Pat. It sounds confusing as all get up and go, but it's actually named, the acronym is a space telescope that has been in orbit since 2009. And this particular object, the satellite, the spacecraft, has an image. It images in the infrared where the human eye can't see. And they found this thermal signature out in space. And that, lo and behold, is the origin of NEOWISE. So NEOWISE is basically a telescope in the, in the sky that orbits the Earth, a satellite. An incredible ability to pick up thermal objects. So this particular comet, which is actually from the deep dark edge of the solar system. This particular one allegedly has a nucleus of about three miles in diameter. That's large for a comet. And it actually survived what they call perihelion when it came closest to the sun on July the 3rd. And lo and behold, Pat, in the morning sky, I've been following it since the early part after July 5th. The comet is so bright that people can actually see it in dark areas with the naked eye. Binoculars will help. It's a really spectacular comment. We haven't. That's had the one. answer to the question that they're yes. asking right now. Yes. Why is Pat talking to Dr. Sky about a comet with a strange name? Right. It's because of the fact that we can see it this evening. Absolutely, because most comets, Pat, that the spacecraft detect, they either disrupt. There were two comets earlier this year, a comet called Atlas and another in the same series. They got too close to the sun, and they're, if you describe it, comets basically are like a big rubble pile. And they have the creation of material from the or or origin of the solar system. Sometimes when they get too close to the sun, they'll break apart. That's what happened to those. This one didn't. It's actually visible, as I mentioned before, in the morning sky and soon to be a spectacular object in the evening sky if you're not an early riser. Uh, okay. Would you mind describing at least what a comet is as opposed to a meteor or sure. any of the other things sure. that we might see scooting by every once in a be while happy. at night? When the solar system was formed about four and a half billion years ago, the extra material that was way out in the solar system, an astronomer named Jan Oort described this and they called it the Oort cloud. It's the material left over from the creation of this solar system. On the surface of the comet, it's icy material that is literally, and some people estimate that this planet itself was actually seeded with life from comets. It's a concept called panspermia, in which means that these objects literally came through and, in, and impregnated, if you want to use the word, the Earth, with early viruses and early DNA. The comets themselves are interesting. If you get very close to the sun, the comet, that material that's ice starts to bubble off the surface. It's a technical term called sublimation. The ice then goes directly as the heat of the sun absorbs that. It goes directly from ice, passes the liquid stage, and goes directly to gas, and that material is strewn off the comet. There's violent uh, geysers on the surface of comets, like in Bruce Willis's Armageddon. If we go back to that movie, you see him standing on the surface. There'd be gas jets popping out all over the place, a very non-compatible person for people. So this comet, as I mentioned before, orbits the sun, I should say, for the first time. If you believe in the afterlife, and this one hopefully you'll get a good seat for, because if you miss Comet Neowise now, prepare to be seated, that is, an up close and personal, in July of the year 8750. So this comet orbits the sun. Wait a minute, hold it. 8750. 87, yes. That's about 6,800 years. Well, it's right. applicable to me. Absolutely. I mean, I can, because as you're long as I man. know where to look when right. it comes back. You're absolutely but when you're talking about this kind of a thing, you're talking about a dirty big hunk of ice about the size of Litchfield Park. That's exactly over. right. And with only a minute left, tell us where to look tonight. Tonight, if you go out, look into the north-northwest, just to the right of where the sun set, clear sky you need. Let's hope the monsoon clouds stay away. A pair of binoculars will be good. The farther are you away from city lights of Phoenix, it should be visible in binoculars with the tail moving up. 
As this month continues, the comet will get higher in the sky, moving below the bold stars of the Big Dipper. It's a fascinating sight to see. It kind of gets us away from our COVID depression because now we can go out, at least in the yard, and see something that doesn't come by us all that often. Fascinating stuff from astronomy. It still might be a kind of a depressive experience going out and finding out that you're looking at a comet uh, at dusk and right. it's still 107 degrees. However, it's <laughs> worth it because otherwise you're going to miss it until the year 87, 6,800 years. Well, Dr. Right. Sky knows all this stuff, and that's why we keep inviting him back on the Daily Mix.